This book is called The Button Box, and it's written by Margaret Reed, and it's illustrated by Sarah Chamberlain. So reading with us is not a box of buttons, but it's something that came from a box of buttons, something that was made from a box of buttons. I don't think you're going to be able to guess it because it's kind of, kind of random. So I'm just going to go ahead and show it to you. It is a flamingo that is covered in buttons. Can you see all those buttons? They're hot glued on, and I had to take the legs off for this book, but she's outside in, in my yard, um, so she'll stand up in the yard. But these are all buttons from a button box, and I'll give you the story behind these buttons in a little bit. Oh, and you know what? I'm actually, hold on, my favorite button. Oh, her, my favorite button actually fell off her, so I'll have to find it. She had a little bow in her hair. And it was a little bow button. It was pretty cute. All right, let's get started. The button box. My grandma has a special box. I like to play with what's inside. Whoa. Can you see what's in there? It's buttons. So now I'll tell you the story of this flamingo. So my grandma actually did not have a button collection, but it was my aunt. Her name is Aunt Emily, and she had a very, very large collection of buttons. And one day she decided she was going to give it to me. And so the buttons, we, we had the buttons for a long time, and we loved looking through them and talking about them and discovering neat things on each button. So one day we found out about a contest, a flamingo contest that was going on. You had to decorate a flamingo, and we decided what would be cuter than decorating it with buttons. So we covered this flamingo in buttons, and we named the flamingo Cute as a Button. So that is what we did with our box of buttons, and we actually still have a lot left over. I swirl the buttons round and round, and then I pick the ones that I like. Ten have flowers painted on them, just like Grandma's china dishes. I like to sort them first. Next, I look for sparkly buttons. I pretend they're jewels that once belonged to kings and queens and movie stars. Some buttons are covered with cloth, satin, velvet, or corduroy. They make me think of very fancy clothes. That's the fun with buttons. They're all so different. And like, look at this one over here. There's one that's like the gold button. Ooh, look at this one. Do you see that silver one? Let me see, hold on. There's like that pearl one right there. Oh, and look at this one. It has an anchor on it. Can you see that? Let's see. That one has like an anchor on it. And ooh, that one has cloth. They're just all different. That is, oop, there's a pretty one. That's what's so fun about buttons. Okay. There are metal buttons from overalls and jeans, leather ones from cowboy shirts and sweaters. This looks like one from Grandpa's winter coat. Grandma says these small ones came from shoes worn long ago. Next, I sort the shiny buttons that come from uniforms. I line them up like marchers in a big parade. The one with the eagle I call Mr. President. See the eagle one? I feel like every button has a story to it. Okay. I pull out the pearly ones and make a rainbow pattern. When does little change to big? I can never tell. See, the buttons are all in different sizes. Some buttons have four holes. Some have two. Some don't have any sewing holes. They have shanks instead. These make good eyes on puppets or stuffed animals. So you see th this little thing right back there? So some buttons don't have holes. They have those instead called shanks. 
and you can sew them on things like a sock puppet. There's all kinds of uses for buttons. You can always do something fun with buttons. Sometimes when grandma sorts with me, we play a special game. We stir the buttons, then we shut our eyes, and then we each take one. Grandma asks, are they alike? Mine is wooden, so is hers. Both are round and flat, but hers is thick and mine is thin. She puts my button on a string. Whirl it around, she says. The string twists up. I pull the ends and we listen to it hum. Grandma tells me that some buttons, or I'm sorry, what some buttons used to be. Some were seashells, some were even sand. Big furnaces heat the sand until it melts, and when it cools, it's glass. Wooden buttons come from trees. Deer shed their antlers every winter and grow new ones in the spring. I like the buttons made from their old horns. So see, buttons come from, they're made from so many different things. It's really, really neat to think about where they come from. When it's time to put in the buttons back, I pretend I'm very rich, counting all my gold. I like to feel the buttons then, the bumpy and the smooth. I like the way they sound, clickety-tappity falling through my fingers, one by one into the box. Then Grandma puts the box away, where it'll wait until next time. I wonder who first figured buttons out. So in the back of the book, see, they leave you wondering, hmm. I wonder who first figured buttons out, and that's a really, really good question. So then the author was so clever that she wrote a little thing in the back, and it says, buttons, buttons. Who invented buttons? Now, I don't even know who invented buttons, so I'm very excited to read this. Are you? Let's see. No one knows who first figured buttons out, but when archaeologists dig up towns and cities thousands of years old, they find pieces of stone, bone, clay, and metal that look like buttons. For a long time, buttons were used with loops. Then, about 800 years ago, someone thought of fastening a piece of clothing by making a slit in it and slipping a button through. The buttonhole had been invented. Around the 13th century, kings began to wear buttons to show how rich and important they were. Isn't that funny? Buttons used to be a sign of how important you were. And now buttons are on everything. Let's see, where did I leave off? Okay, one French king had a suit covered with 13,600 buttons. Laws to keep ordinary people from wearing fancy buttons didn't last that long. Over the years, buttons make, I'm sorry, button makers carved, stamped, and molded buttons from ivory, pewter, glass, and a variety of other materials. Artists painted pictures of everything imaginable on buttons. Men wore buttons with pictures of their horses on, or dogs on them. Cut steel buttons sparkled on ladies' gowns. Tiny little pearl buttons decorated children's clothes. Wow. During the American Revolution, patriots refused to buy English buttons, just as they refused to pay a tax on tea. Paul Revere of the famous Midnight Ride made fine silver buttons. Special buttons were designed for the inauguration of George Washington. So buttons are very, they're very, very important. Although people still save buttons to use over and over today, many people collect them just for the fun of it. That was a super cute book. I learned something from that book. Did you learn something? I learned the history of buttons, which was very interesting. And like they said, buttons are just fun to collect, and you can do so many, so many fun things with them. You can just be creative and make something artwork, invent a new thing. You could cover a flamingo in them. I never thought I'd cover flamingo in buttons, but yet here we did. Let's look on this side. Let's see if there's anything good over there. Let's look. There's a lot of hot glue. Do you see all that? Oh, I think I put a special button under here. Let me look. Underneath her belly. I know I had a favorite button. Where did I put it? Hmm. I hid a very special button. Let's look. Well, hmm. 
No, I can't find it. It was a tiny little bumblebee. But I can't find it. Maybe it fell off. Well, if it did fall off, I hope somebody found it who really, really loved it. All right, friends. Well, thank you so, so much for reading with us and our button flamingo. I hope you'll come back and read soon. Bye-bye.